Hi everyone. I noticed that a lot of my viewers are actually from the United States. In this video, I'm going to talk about a camera you have probably never heard about. This guy, the Zenith. Because of geopolitical reasons, and Russian goods were not widely distributed in the US, or not at all. It was a different story here in Europe. For instance, my parents drove a Lada car that was made in Russia, and uh, Russian camera equipment were readily available. Here's what we would find on a Belgian catalog from the early 70s, and they even say, Soyez dans le vent, photographier russe, which stands for be trendy, use Russian cameras. But being trendy was not the only appeal to these cameras, it was their affordability. Now, let's have a look at this same catalog. This is what you would pay for a Canon camera. This is what you would pay for a Minolta camera. And this is what you would pay for a Zenith. We are not talking about 10% or even 20% cheaper. No, it was a lot more. But how did they do that? Well, they had a few tricks upon their sleeve. First of all, they used some uh, what was considered to be outdated or obsolete technology. There is no bayonet mount on this camera. It's a screw mount, M42, which is pretty cool if you ask me, but it saves them money because there was no bayonet to be machined. It was a, a simpler technology. The aperture has no coupling to the rest of the camera, so the metering is done at a real aperture, which darkens the viewfinder, which is already pretty dark, but more on that later. The frame counter is automatically reset and there is no hot shoe for the flash. You had to connect to the PC connector on the side here. The shutter speed would appear to be somehow limited, you see. The fastest shutter speed is 1 over 500, which is not very fast, and the slowest shutter speed is 1 over 30. So there is no high speeds and no slow speeds. That's basically how they did that. A cheaper camera using outdated technologies while stripping it out of certain features. Compared to Western camera from that era, the viewfinder is really small and dark. It's uh, not comfortable to look through it, but hey, it gets the job done. Even the user manual looks cheaper. Look at the paper. It looks like recycled paper compared to the glossy paper from this Pantax manual but you've got all the information you need to use the camera. When people are reviewing Zenith cameras, they praise the build quality and the image quality. About the build quality, this is really industrial. It's very simple, it's rough. It's not as refined as a Japanese or a European camera, but once again, it gets the job done. Talking about the lens quality, it's not color-coated, so you won't get the saturated colors you are used to with Japanese lenses. It's pretty sharp if you stop it down, but the main appeal of this lens is the swirling bokeh. The Elios 44M has this wonderful out-of-focus areas that look very pleasing to the eye. And that's the reason many videographers these days are adapting these lenses onto digital video cameras, just to get this awesome cinematic look. And you can achieve this with a cheap camera and a cheap lens. What's not to like about it? Well, you tell me. Plus, this camera uses an M42 lens mount, so feel free to use any aftermarket lens you wish, like a Takuma or maybe another Russian lens. They're awesome and not really that expensive anyways. This is a simple camera, therefore it's easy to use. Setting up the exposure is just about centering the needle, like in this illustration, and uh, it also uses a battery. This is a TTL model. Former Zenith, like the Zenith E, used an external selenium light meter, which would work with our batteries. This one originally required a mercury battery that is not available now anymore, but the Russians were small enough to put this small screw on the side, which gives you access to a trim pot so you can recalibrate your light meter for using it with alkaline batteries. That's uh, a plus in my mind.
So, what are my final thoughts on the Zenith TTL here? It's an outdated camera, even from back then. It was sold in 1978 when Canon was already selling the Canon A1, a fully computerized computer, while this uses mechanical older technology. If you want to compare it to something, let's say that this is a whack-a-mole game, while the Canon A1 is a Sony PS5. Yes, they do the same thing, but using different technologies. But this camera is so cool. I mean, it's a pleasure to use. Yes, the viewfinder is really dark. Yes, it has some limitations, but limitations breed creativity. And when you think about it, not being able to use a slower shutter speed or a higher shutter speed, well, that's not really that big of a deal. If you want to get the shot, you will. Plus, the Helios lens gives you tremendous results and uh, it opens you to a world where the camera is not something refined. It's not a piece of jewelry. It's not like a finely crafted Swiss watch, like an Olympus or a Nikon camera. This is a tool. It's a photographic tool. And when it comes to image quality and photography, it gets the job done. And that's everything there is to know about it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video about the Zenith TTL cameras. If you liked my content, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, I will see you next time. Goodbye.